think we're live. All right. This is a new setup I'm trying out, guys. This is connected to a DSLR camera. I don't know if you everyone can see it. It pretty much looks like... Uh, does this work? Can everyone hear me? Anyway. Alright. This is cool. It's working. Oh, hey, Mark. Cool. Sweet. That took about 45 minutes to figure out. It, it's um, cool. Sweet. We're in business. So I've got Facebook Live going. I've also got TikTok going. Uh, but I thought I'd hop on really quick because uh, some people had questions about mid-back pain and lower back pain. So TikTok and the short 30 second Facebook video really is enough time to explain all the mechanics and why back pain hap happens uh, but but the majority of it is it looks like uh, the acupressure points do work for a lot of people so uh, I do tell people uh, I'm completely upfront like it's not going to make it go away but if you can't get into your physio during this pandemic or you can't go see a practitioner uh, acupressure is something that that's worth looking into and we're trying as well so if you're in the group or you are uh, you've seen some of the videos and it's worked for you obviously this is gonna acupuncture is most likely gonna work even better for you so uh, a lot of things with back pain right now we're talking about back pain uh, pretty much is back pain mostly it's either consists of three reasons just like um, most of the other things we see in clinic it's either physical stress emotional stress or chemical stress so most of the time it is a combination of the three so Acupressure, if it works, it's great, but there are some things, if something is too far structurally gone, hi mini girl 2018, if something is too far structurally gone, then it's probably not going to work. Uh, the other time where it doesn't work is if it works momentarily or temporarily is when you have uh, overweight. So this is a, a, a lot obese patient. So a lot of, I have quite a few, not a quite a few, but I see patients that are obese sometimes and they'll have a severe knee pain or severe lower back pain and we do a, a course of acupuncture treatments acupuncture treatments and it's hard to feel better so but at the root of it if you don't lose the weight it's gonna it's just gonna keep pressing on those joints and you're gonna be back to square one so i always tell people before you start doing anything you just have to be honest with yourself like if you, you don't want to change your lifestyle habits or change make some tweaks you're always probably going to have pain unfortunately but that's the, the that's the nature of the beast hello sausage dog lover bucks or lakers lakers can i please get a follow um sure i'll follow you let's see pickle these are <laughs> i'm here to answer health questions but yeah i can say pickle not a problem so uh, I had someone post something, ask me a question about mid back pain. So if you've seen these videos before, mid back pain is really simple. It's a really, really simple point right here on the inside of your thumb right here. And if you just press through this kind of like this pad of the thumb right here, press through here, and press until you find a sore, tender, or achy spot. So just press there, hold 15 to 30 seconds right here. This is a really great spot, guys, for uh, mid-upper upper back pain as well. So again, this is not going to fix it, but it should relieve it if you can't get a massage or see a physio or something like that or see your acupuncturist. But at the root of it, it is a posture. I know it's really hard because everyone's on computers and devices right now. And I'm just going to flip to... See if any comments here. So Simon Hunter, Trinity, Queen of Mean 69. That's a cool name. LB Stag Johnston. So really quick, 
for lower back pain. This is the most common lower back pain point that I usually tell people if you can't do anything, this is the best thing you can do. Uh, find your index and your thumb and you look for this junction where you can't go anymore and you just press this area right here and hold it 15 to 30 seconds. So if your pain is on your left hand side, you want to do the right hand. If your pain is on the right hand side, you want to do the left hand. So it's usually the opposite hand. So just press and hold this point here and you should feel a dull achy sensation. You just turn around, move your back a bit. Uh, most of the time that will, for most people that will work and that will relieve the back pain. But again, uh, once it's, that doesn't mean it's gone. You still need to lose weight if you're overweight. You still need to reduce the inflammation in your diet, dietary foods such as uh, alcohol, caffeine, and uh, processed foods as well. So a uh, great actually supplement that you can take for inflammation in the lower back is actually turmeric. There's tons of research on turmeric. Turmeric is really good. Turmeric and magnesium as well on top of some exercise. Most of the time that does. Uh, if you're being monitored, if you have a health practitioner, they should be able to recommend those things for you as well. So, welcome Susan Golden, first time in your live session. Oh, Elemental 1992, welcome. So today we're talking about lower back pain. So uh, sometimes with acupressure, you'll feel that it, you'll notice that if you do a pain um, pressure point right here, the pain either disappears or sometimes it'll move up or it'll move down. That's all very normal. So that just that just that doesn't mean it's not working. That just means you probably had that pain the whole time. But because your brain is starting to realize, oh, this pain is going backwards, that other pain is coming forwards, so that lets us know that the pain has moved up, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means your body's starting to heal. So if it starts to move up, there are other points we can do uh, on top of that as well. So Elmetsa 1992, my husband has inflammation in blood, something that per the doc, he gets back pain often. Okay, well, that's something that uh, you can do as well. If there's inflammation, that, that's perfect. Uh, this point right here. And uh, another point that's very, very popular actually is on your forearms right here. So hold on, let me stand up real quick. So on the forearms, on the outside here, you have this muscle. It's called the brachioradialis muscle. You just press on here, and you press on this spot all through here uh, from your lower arm all the way down to your wrist. So press 15 to 30 seconds, 15 to 30 seconds. 15 to 30 seconds as well. This whole entire area, this represents the lower back. So those are two spots that you can, you can do that on both arms as well. So those are two things that you can do really quick. So with inflammation if it's in the blood, I would look at, I get some bloods. I look at the ESR levels, which is the uh, inflammatory levels in the body as well, and as long as white, white blood cells. I don't think it's uh, gonna be simple, something as simple as some acupressure points that'll get rid of it, but this should get your husband some relief. Knee pain just under the knee. Uh, do you mean the front of the knee or the back of the knee? Metson 74. So for knee pain just under the knee, a really, really simple thing is you can use your elbow. So you just take your elbow, flex the muscle a bit, and over here you're going to feel a crease right there and press. So this whole area of the elbow, this represents the knee. So if you go inside here, uh, on the inside of the uh, of the elbow as well. You can press through here on the inside crease as well. And then you can on the outside as well. So I would press these those two spots uh, for knee pain. Inside right. Okay, yep, perfect. Uh, inside right, I'd go on the inside of the, this bicep right here uh, at the crease right over here. Press that. And you want to do the opposite knee. So you can do both. If it's both knees, do both knees. So if this is this arm is here, that's for the left knee. This arm here is for the right knee. So those points usually work pretty well for knee pain uh, on top of some strengthening exercises as well. It really depends. Knees are knees are tricky. It could be ACL, MCL, PCL. So it depends if it's torn. If it's completely torn, then acupressure may or may not work. So I do a bit of jujitsu, so a lot of guys are always complaining about knee pain as well. So with those complete tears, those loud pops, it's probably going to take a while. But this sometimes this should help as well. So, FT Chris, Telecon, awesome, thanks, no problem. Thank you. So, uh, right now we're focused on lower back. I'm, I'm going to answer any lower back pain questions, but if you guys have any other questions as well, just throw them up. Uh, hop, happy to answer them. Uh, I'm going to business with cameras. <laughs> oh, you want to business with cameras? All right, perfect. We should get together and talk cameras sometime, Mark. So, 
yeah, I've been playing with cameras for a while now. Um, I'm definitely not a professional, but I, I, I definitely feel that um, social media and these cameras that actually allow um, other people to reach people that they would have never reached, especially during this pandemic. You can't talk to anybody. But uh, during this pandemic, I started this TikTok. I started doing a lot more Facebook Lives. And the feedback's been really good so far. So I'm just trying to help as many people uh, as I can out there. So good day from Bundaberg. I have to go to Bundaberg. I haven't been to Bundaberg sometime. What's it like out there? New Benson. Okay, so I'm just coming in. Thank you for the follow. Butterfly Rose. So is everyone, where is everyone from? Is everyone from Australia or where? Ooh, what should I do for neck pain? Hussein, go, go, what goes up? Neck pain. Neck pain, it depends on where your neck pain is. So is it uh, on the base of the neck? Is it on the side of the neck or the back of the neck? I have my little guy right here. So if it's the base of the neck here or is it uh, on the back over here? So a really, really quick uh, tip for that is, uh, here's something I learned from my teacher actually. So whether, no matter where the neck pain is, what you can do is you can just take a hand and you've got your uh, knuckles in between here. So if you draw a line all the way through your knuckles right here, these points here uh, work really, excuse me, work really well for neck pain. So if you press here, in between each knuckles, in between all these knuckles here, there's gonna be a spot that's really, really sore and tight. And you just press through here, through here, through here, all this entire area here, this spot is really great for neck pain. So you just press that. If the pain is more on the right hand side, you do your left hand. If the pain is on the opposite side, you do the other hand as well. So always opposite side. So some people do ask me, why do you do the opposite hand? Uh, I think it has a lot to do with the brain pretty much. So in the ancient texts and the Chinese medical texts as well, they say opposite side, but uh, they never have said why. They just said do the opposite side. But in terms of how the brain works, if you look at a stroke patient, if the right hand side is affected at the brain, that will affect the left. And I think it has a lot to do with the way the brain works. The reason why there are so many hand points that work in acupressure is because there's a huge portion of your brain that's actually allocated to um, those nerves that, that help the hand, that move the hand. So if you notice, uh, if you notice in babies, babies always learn how to crawl and then they learn how to walk. And the last thing they, use, they learn how to use are their fingers. The finger dexterity comes the last because that's the most complicated nerve interventions. So uh, same thing as in older patients or when you get a stroke, when a person has a stroke, they're pretty much like a baby again. So if you're like a baby again, uh, you have to learn how to walk all over again. So if a person has a stroke, they start to learn use of use feet again and they start to walk. And the last thing that always comes back the last bit is the hand dexterity. So with using acupressure, you're doing the opposite of that. You're stimulating the hands, stimulating the brain in order to get the neck to relax. So back to the neck pain question, uh, here, 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 make a loose fist here so all aligned through here and even uh, at this the first joint right here so you can see this but the first joint right here on the index finger as well um, cool mark yeah always feel free to send me a message mark so those that's uh, that's pretty much why the hand points work so well and there's so many hand points in Chinese medicine for different types of ailments because it stimulates the brain that's my opinion at least so let's see, Australia, all right. Love Australia, guys, been here six years. Can't get enough of this place, best place in the world. Uh, why my girl on period has neck pain? Ooh. What about migraine and half feels like headache for some time? Okay, so I'll answer the one on period pain and neck pain. Neck pain during period, I don't see that very often. Most of the time I do see a uh, people with neck with pain during their period most time is lower back related because uh, the blood flow to the back to the kidneys isn't as well so that uh, in Chinese medicine they call it stagnated blood so when blood's not moving that's when you have pain most of the time it is for in the in the lower back I have I don't think I've seen anyone with neck pain that could be something separate but it could be stress issues different hormone levels as well so um, it depends does your girlfriend does she or, or wife, does she have a regular menses? Does she have painful periods as well? 
So that may be more of a hormone issue than actual structural issue. No problem, Kaminian. Migraine in half head feels like ache sometimes. Where is the migraine? Is it on the back of the eye, the back of the head, on the sides? Most of the migraines I've seen in clinic, uh, they all, they're actually from the eye. The people start to see auras and uh, sensitivity to light as well. So a really great acupressure point that you can do for that is, until you see a practitioner, is uh, this one between your pinky toe and your uh, ring toe. Not your ring, yeah, your ring toe. So in between here, you have these two tendons on your feet and it's press. 15, 30 seconds in this entire area here. These points are really great for migraines and headaches as well. Uh, that's headaches behind the eye and on the side of the head as well. So if it's somewhere else, just leave me in the comments. I'll, I'll get back to it. Thank you for your insights. No problem. At times, she's not, not that often. So it may or may not be related then uh, to the period if, she has, if she's having neck pain. It uh, could be different. Sinus sinus, is that curable? Or Bortzi. Bortzi, sinusitis, I think it depends as well. Is it allergic sinitis, allergic rhinitis as well? Uh, sometimes people with deviated septums, that's probably unless you have it surgically fixed, it's not going to fix itself. But uh, with seasonal allergies, there are acupressure points that you can use, uh, especially with uh, sinuses, which is right here. Over here on the outside, this is called the wing of your nose, nasal ally, but just you know, if you just look at the ring of the nose, wing of the nose right here, just off of here, there's a point right here. You can just take your finger and just press it, and sometimes it get blocked. It gets blocked up over here. Just press over here and press over here. 15 to 30 seconds. I just used it the other week actually. the The weather, if you're in Australia, just in Brisbane, the weather just kind of all of a sudden drops as soon as the sun sets, and right around dawn break, it starts to uh, get really really cold. And my, I was like kind of. I couldn't breathe in my sleep, so I woke myself up. And I did this just thinking about it. I think I was doing another Facebook Live video, and I uh, kind of just opened the pathway right up, opened the uh, cleared the block right up. But with sinusitis, long term, I would say acupressure, uh, acupuncture, and herbs would probably give you a better result as well. But acupressure, these two points I showed you right now, that should help a bit. Are uh, headaches related to drinking liquids? Uh, what kind of liquid would you say? Water, definitely. I would say keep hydrated. Headaches are mainly from either structural, physical, uh, postural, or it could be stress-related as well. Or with females, it could be hormonal. So it really depends as well. Most of the time, I'd say it's a combination of all three. But uh, keeping hydrated is definitely a good idea. I tried now helps. Oh, that's awesome, Bortzi. Water, yes. Yeah, uh, definitely keep hydrated. So on the subject of keeping hydrated, most people uh, say drink seven liters of water per day. I think that's a bit... Uh, I don't. I don't know anyone that drinks seven uh, seven liters of water a day. Like I rule of thumb. There's a great, really, really great book on how much water and how to eat and how to pretty much uh, get your digestion straight. It's called the Enzyme Factor. I'm always talking about it. It's always the same book, guys. <laughs> so the Enzyme Factor. So in the Enzyme Factor, it talks about how much water you should drink. So a good measure, because everyone, everybody's body is different. So if you're 200, 150 kgs, and I'm 60 kgs, like should we both be drinking seven liters of water? Uh, I don't know, but a, a good rule of measurement is, uh, according to the book, uh, this is written by a f uh, famous gastroenterologist, and he examines the intestines of uh, different people, over 10,000 people. So he has an idea of what he, what is good for intestines, what is not. So for him, he recommended when you're drinking water, make sure you drink a glass of water in the morning when you wake up, but two to three glasses and just drink and just pay attention to say like 2, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And if you pay attention to your urine, if it's yellow, that means you're not hydrated enough. If it's clear, then you have enough water in your system in a nutshell. So pay attention to the color of your urine. That'll, that'll be an indicator of um, how much water you need. So I, I don't know, some, some, maybe some maybe for seven liters people need more. Uh, for me, seven liters is plenty enough. Like that's, that's more than enough as well. Any tip for losing belly fat? Ooh, belly fat. That is a great question, and it goes back to the enzyme factor. Again, losing belly fat. So the thing that... Uh, the gastroenterologist he he recommends is um, eighty percent plants and grains and veggies and fruit and twenty percent protein. So with these other diets, because uh, a lot of people I know it's really really popular right now to do keto diet and other diets and soft speech diet, um, different variations of the 
um, Atkins diet as well that was very popular in the 90s. Excuse me. So those diets, uh, they are good, but you need to cycle on and off of them. You lose the weight really quick, which is true, but oftentimes the weight comes right back. And that's the problem with these diets is they're not sustainable. So you can cycle on and off of them, but as soon as you cycle off, the weight comes right back. With this diet, uh, in a nutshell, it's 80% plants, 20% animal protein. And there's a really, really great book by Eat to Live as well by Joel, Dr. Joel Furman, MD as well. And they basically recommend the same thing. So this is not a lose weight, Jenny Craig, lose it right off, right away. It's actually, it works slower than the keto diet. But the great thing about it, if you go on that diet, you will lose the weight and you will keep the weight off. Because you don't want to do all that hard work to lose it and then just swing up and down and up and down. So that's that's actually, it's probably taxing emotionally, but also it kind of get, discourages you. But uh, that is a book that I would recommend, The Enzyme Diet uh, by Dr. Shinya. And... The other diet uh, book I recommend is Eat to Live. It both, basically, they say the same thing. If you want to save yourself the time and, and you don't want to get the book, just switch to 80% plants and veg and 20% animal protein, and that, that will help you lose the weight and keep the weight off. And belly fat. So uh, I hope many tune in as they... Oh, we're having playing this video. Okay. So, any tips for losing belly fat? So, I think I'm just going to wrap it up, guys. We've been going for about 20 minutes now. So, if you guys have any last-minute questions, um, do you have something info for the liver? In terms of liver detox or in terms of uh, gallstones? But, Jaren Narcillus O, I think... If you just, oh, bless you and your family. Thank you, boys. No problem. Bless you as well. So liver, liver, liver detox. I'd say recommend liver detox. If you're doing liver detox, I mean, simplest way would be apple cider vinegar, uh, two spoons, and a glass of water in the morning as well. Ooh, Laura P24, jaw pain. Okay, I'll finish up with jaw pain. You guys, it's been about 20 minutes now, so... Um, Pressure points, job. Awesome, no problem, no Benson. Jaw pain. Jaw pain is a really, not tricky one, but uh, really quick again. This is the same thing we use for knee pain as well. So if you just make a bicep right here, this point right here is really great for jaw pain. So press on here, press, hold 15 to 30 seconds. And also in here, right here, 15 to 30 seconds right here. Look for the most tender spot. That doesn't work, you can go on the inside of the elbow. This is a really great point for jaw pain as well. All right, guys. Uh, and I think I have a video as well, Laura, uh, in my TikTok as well. So, all right, guys, I'm signing off. So if you guys if you guys are interested in lower back pain or neck pain, I actually do have a acupressure course for neck and jaw. Uh, neck and back pain, sorry. So link is in the bio. Check it out. Okay, guys, take care.